We've made some fatal assumptions about energy. It's gotten really confusing. What we really need to do is reclassify energy as two types. Fossil fuels is clearly a dead energy. And what are the elements of a live energy? I would like to create a campus that explores a live energy. It's our energy future. And but first I'd like to make a point on this reclassifying of energy and dead energy. And we've taken technology and energy to a point where we think it's going to feed us. You know, we, we think it's going to feed our, our hungry belly. It's, it's like this electrical cord that is tied to my belly button, my umbil umbilical cord. Energy was never designated to create life. This is a live energy. Technology is a tool. Can we have a legitimate discussion about CO2 emissions without discussing the te temperature of our house? I don't think so. In any occupied house, there's two thermostats. One is set at maybe 68 degrees Fahrenheit with your furnace, and it's fed by fossil fuels, and we maintain a constant temperature. The other thermostat that we have not put into our energy equation, the thermostat is set at 98.6. It's the temperature of our bodies. It's fed by food. When we take these two models, fossil fuels, and this new energy that I'm going to re reclassify as a live energy because I have a heartbeat and a constant temperature, 98.6, we can significantly reduce our carbon footprint. It's as simple as proper clothing. I've lived in these cold stone buildings for 12 years, and I can be comfortable sleeping at minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Not that I want you to sleep at this temperature, but if you have to, I would like you to be comfortable. And so we have a very simple model on how we heat our houses. It's based on insulation. Q equals UA delta T. We focused on this U portion of this equation. We really haven't addressed the delta T too much. Um, We have ignored the convective transport in these models, so we can make our houses as efficient as, as we want, but every time we go in and out the door, we have convective heat transfer losses. So if we layer the, the energy model and the first layer of insulation goes on my body, or the, the second layer of insulation is on the bedding, and I have a small itty-bitty heat storage within within the covers of my down comforter, I can eliminate at least 50% of my carbon footprint just by layering, rearranging our insulation in our houses, itty bitty in the energy storage. And I would like to create a campus so we have fun rearranging walls, uh, having some temperature thermal couples around the buildings and uh, evaluating natural geothermal energy that we have in a basement. I've got a stone basement that I stored food in unheated all winter with 10, probably 12 bales of straw, some blankets. And I don't think we've even begun to explore our options for CO2 footprint until we look at a new more elaborate heat transfer model, probably one not based just on an algebra equation, Q equals UA delta T, but about some two and three dimensional heat transfer calculations. We can create great mathematicians, great engineers, and we have the equipment today with this technology to, to measure, load this data into a home computer and model it let's start with discovering heat
transfer in our homes. The planet. We're going to unplug this 